What is going on everybody? Today we're going to go through the top 5 bank fishing tips for spring chinook fishing to hopefully help you catch an additional spring chinook or two the next time you hit the water. So the first tip when it comes to bank fishing for spring chinook, you want a longer rod to be able to cast out farther wherever you're plunking or fishing from the bank. Now personal preference, I like anything over 10 feet. You get that additional height in the rod and be able to cast out your plunking setup a little bit farther from the bank and maybe get into a spot where the fish are hunkered closer into the bank but not so far out that you need to cast halfway across the river. The additional length and longer rods will help you get that gear out a little bit farther. Especially if you're plunking with a bunch of other people on the beach, having your gear being able to go out maybe 10, maybe 20 feet farther than everybody else could make the difference between a really good fishing day and a fishing day just like everybody else where maybe it's one or maybe it's none. When you're talking about baits for bank fishing, you definitely want to make sure you've got coon shrimp and spinning glows and plenty of different colors in the spinning glows and plenty of fresh coon shrimp. Coon shrimp and spinning glows are probably the most popular bait to go after spring chinook when you're talking about bank fishing. Now my tips when you're gonna fish with these is make sure you've got enough fresh coon shrimp and you're swapping out every 45 minutes with a fresh shrimp. And plus when you're casting out there a long ways, the shrimp could break up, it could split in half. You know, some of the smaller or bigger shrimp sometimes don't hang on to that egg loop. So make sure you've got enough fresh coon shrimp with you on your fishing trip. Now when you're talking about fishing with coon shrimp and spinning clothes, make sure that you've got a variety of colors and sizes with you. Now my go-to is the size two, which is about this size of spinning glow, but take some smaller ones, take some bigger ones. As you can see here, I've got darker colors, bright colors, lighter colors, have a variety of different spinning glows with you. So depending on where you're plunking or where you're fishing, make sure that you've got a variety of colors and sizes. There's been days where I had the one color in the box that made all the difference and we were catching fish and everybody else on the bank wasn't. And it also just happened that they didn't have that spinning glow color. So sometimes it can be really finicky and the fish coming by, there's one certain color that they're going after. So make sure you got a variety with you at all times. Now, once you've casted out your gear and your plunking, you're gonna wanna make sure that you've got a bell to attach to your rod so that if you're getting bit and the tip of that rod is going down, that, that bell will go off. And so you're not having to watch your fishing rod the entire day, but this bell would be the indicator to let you know, hey, you got a fish on and you need to go grab your rod. Make sure that you keep no slack in the line and you're keeping the line tight. If the line is not tight and loose, that hook can come out pretty easily from a Chinook. I've seen it more than once where the angler on the bank has got the fish and there's any loose line, especially when they get it in that last 10 feet to the shore. I've just seen multiple instances where even a little bit of slack line and that hook pops right out and that fish is gone. So make sure you got the bell attached, nice and secure. And when the fish goes off, when you hear the bell, Keep that line tight at all times. So of course, when you're bank fishing, you need to have a really good rod holder. Now this is one of the custom ones that I made with recycled materials that only cost me a couple bucks. But I've seen many times when people go out and bank fish, they'll just pick up a stick or something to lean their rod on that's not very sturdy or secure in the bank or especially in the sand. You want a sturdy rod holder that you can jam way down into the sand or wherever you're plunking to ensure that that rod is secure in place. So if you get a big bite before you you're able to get over there and grab the rod out that it's gonna hold up. I've seen a few times and it's happened to me more than once where the rod holder was not secure enough or I didn't have a very good rod holder and that rod was almost in the river by the time I went to grab it. So make sure that you've got a decent and a really long rod holder to get it secure in the bank. So if you get a big 20 pounder to come by and slam your gear, that it's gonna hold up before you're able to get over there and grab it. Now I'm gonna throw an additional pro tip here at the end. Not only can you bank fish coon shrimp and spinning glow is the most popular way, but you can also slide a plug down your main line and get it out into the water as well. It's something just different that might attract the fish, especially if they're closer into the bank than you might think. Now, whether it's a K-15 from Lure Jensen, whether it's a Maglet from Yakima Bay, or sliding one of these spin fish down your main line, having a plug can be a really different technique and a really good way to go after spring chinook and something that maybe not a lot of other people on the bank are going with. These can separate you from all the other anglers out there using coon shrimp and spinning glows. And on tough days, 
These are what have saved me in terms of being successful when I'm bank fishing for Spring Chinook. And then additionally, how often should you be checking your baits? Probably every 45 minutes from a spin and glow perspective, from a plugs perspective, changing baits out. Check every 45 minutes. That seems to be the right amount of time to give that enough time to soak the bait to see if a fish will come by. Otherwise, reel it in, make sure the bait's good or rebait yourself because you want that fresh bait. And sometimes getting that fresh bait out there can be the difference between getting a bite and going home empty. And that's my top five spring Chinook bank fishing tips. Hopefully that helps you guys catch an additional spring Chinook or two. Hit the like button on the video, subscribe if you love fishing and other outdoor content. And as always guys, the outdoors is a gift, share it with others.